it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of my giant Iron Man Hulkbuster suit. So last time I showed you this frame which I designed. I've done this in Autodesk 123D design, although I'm not actually going to use the CAD drawings to make the pieces. This was just purely as a sketch pad. Um, the basic idea, as I mentioned, is that there's a frame which you climb into and it makes you taller, so your feet are on blocks, but all of the joints will lock, which will allow the suit to be freestanding. And when you climb into it, you'll then unlock them and then you can walk around in it. And, and the same when you climb out, so you can basically leave the whole thing assembled and standing there and it's easy to get in and out of. Um, obviously the frame will be covered in some body panels, which will hinge open and closed. And there'll be um, tons of animatronics and lights and sound in it as well. So the arms are supported by this overhead gantry and the bottoms of those will be mechanised. So check out part one of the video for more details on that. So today we're going to try and make the actual stilt sections, which um, how, basically put you a, a foot higher, so 30 centimetres higher, and then they've got their own toes in with shock absorbers, which um, basically allow you to roll over onto the toe of each foot whilst walking, so it makes more of a natural walking motion. So I've been thinking more about how to do that, and I've done a more refined drawing, um, in fact, instead of just having the toes sticking out with shock absorbers, what I've decided to do is actually have the whole stilt piece pivot on a base um, around the ball of the foot. So the base is just a um, effectively a plate with a pivot on it. And on top of that is this piece, which um, in fact I'm probably not going to going to pivot onto a, a bar there, it's probably going to be made with a domestic door hinge because those are quite tough and quite easy to uh, stick in there. And then obviously we've got the platform for the foot. Um, there's going to be some method of binding your foot in, probably using snowboard bindings. And then there'll be a knee hook to stop your knee moving backwards and forwards, uh, which will be custom designed. So basically I need to try and make these, a pair of them, and then we'll see how um, my legs and knees fit into them. Right, so here we are, let's have a closer look and see what we've got. So I've built these to be quite boxy, and the reason is that is, as I mentioned, they have to support the entire suit when it's freestanding. 
Um, I'd also like not to have to sort of walk on the spot to stay stationary and I want quite a stable base because the suit's going to be quite heavy to hold up on one's shoulders. Um, as you can see I've got these boots in here. These are snowboard boots which I um, just bought on eBay second hand. I think they were never actually worn because the person found they were too small. Um, they're a bit snug on me but they'll probably do. Uh, I'm actually going to have snowboard bindings which hold these boots in which will hold my uh, feet in place. Although I haven't actually received those yet so they're not fitted. Um, there's going to be plenty of space in here for snowball bindings, obviously they're going to be a bit bigger than the boot. Um, and that's because I need to have a remote method of clamping my feet in, which will be cable operated. So I need plenty of space to build a mechanical assembly. Um, the snowball bindings I've bought have got they're basically um, straps on the toe, and then they've got a folding high back which folds up, and that piece is going to be operated remotely with cables. So what I described with a bit of cat at the beginning of the video was this um, basically the flat base with the roll over hinge on the ball of the foot. So we can see there we've got this flat piece of plywood which is 9mm plywood and what I've in fact done is use door hinges at this point. So the, the weight of the wearer is on another piece of 9mm ply with this square box section. That's got two quite substantial door hinges and then a big block of wood underneath. I've also put an end stop in so um, this doesn't come all the way over and you can't overbalance. And I've got these metal plates here to strengthen the wood on the corners. Um, that's only really going to be the trailing foot when walking, but we still don't want the, the wood to split there. So from a sideways point of view, it can tilt like that. In the back here, there's going to be um, a spring which pulls this back down. And that's so when the foot lifts up, that doesn't drag on the ground. So um, what we need is to have that lift and only fold over when you put your weight onto the toe effectively. So obviously here we've got two substantial chunks of wood that support the weight of the wearer on the back. So looking at the top here, um, obviously the next section up will be a thigh hinge and we've got um, a much higher th uh, sort of knee on the outside. So this is actually the knee and the next piece will be the thigh piece. Um, so we've got a lower one here so it fits in between the wearer's legs. The one on the outside is this big so that we can have a big hub on here um, and there can be a pin that um, sticks in from the thigh piece so that it can lock the joints in place. So locking all the joints in place is quite crucial for this suit so we can basically climb out of it with the joints locked um, and walk away and leave it freestanding. Alright so obviously these make quite substantial bases to stand on, there's no, going to be no problems with that um, which is quite good for casually standing. Um, in the suit there's obviously no wobble. Um, plasterers stilts have a slightly different mechanism where they're not just blocks, they actually have a kind of parallelogram thing that moves as you move your own ankles. Um, but because I'm holding quite a heavy suit I can't really do that because it's likely that it's going to get wobbly and things will go wrong. I really don't want to fall over wearing these. So obviously I've got nothing to hold my feet in at the moment. As I mentioned I'll have snowboard bindings and I'll also have a knee hook. Um, I need to have some motion left and right to shift my weight to walk. So it's likely to be an extended padded horseshoe shape to put my knees in and something like a roller coaster buzz bar that comes down behind and there's plenty of space to build that in. Obviously I have to be quite cautious that if I do fall over I don't break my legs. Um, so that's going to take a bit of doing I think. So the advantage of having the toes that move of course is that I can do all sorts of fancy things and still keep my balance. So for instance I can put one foot back and I can almost crouch completely down and I can almost uh, put the, this foot back even though it's not hitting the end stop because this one is on its end stop so um, that means I can stay quite stable. So hopefully I should be able to do some fairly fluid motions. Um, when I'm walking I can, at the moment I have to hold these with my hands but um, the aim is of course that I can roll onto the toe of this foot when I take a step forward with the other one so and so on as I walk. It's kind of hard to say at the moment how easy that's going to be because I have to hold these with my hands uh, when I'm in a more natural walking position hopefully that should be much easier um, and again I can do various crouching motions and all sorts of things. So don't forget to check out my YouTube channel for future updates on this and other projects. I also have a Patreon crowdfunding campaign running at the moment have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots. You can get some exclusive rewards, including access to a live broadcast with me. I have another one coming up in a few weeks' time. 
I'm also trying to engage with Twitter a lot more. So add me on Twitter if you're on Twitter. It's at xrobotsuk.